Hey everybody, I'm Ryan. Today, we're going to talk about the old gods in World of Warcraft lore. If you want to learn more about anything I mentioned in this video, links to those things will be in the description as I do the videos on them. From the beginning, the primordial force of the void has been trying to consume and twist reality into a realm of darkness. Entities formed from the void, which work to this end, the void lords, they watched the titans and envied their power and concluded in order to twist the universe into a realm of darkness, they needed to corrupt one of the titans. Through tremendous effort, the void lords began seeping into the physical universe. Their goal was to infect a titan before it had awakened, also known as world souls. Some worlds in the universe contained sleeping titans, but the void lords didn't know which ones. So they pooled their power together to create dark creatures and thrust them into the universe in random directions, hoping some would land on a world with a world soul. They would corrupt the worlds they landed on, whether they had a titan in them or not. Old gods are physical manifestations of the void, nightmarish mountains of flesh, eyes, and tentacles, also known as Shoth-Yar in their language. While all creatures of the void are naturally chaotic, old gods are particularly so. They serve the void lords by trying to turn the worlds they land on into worlds of despair and death. They embed themselves on the worlds they land on and try to consume them with void energies. They grow on these worlds like cancers. And in the words of the old god yogg saron the void sucks at your soul. It is content to feast slowly. Old gods have psychic powers, which can twist the thoughts of most beings and sometimes take control of them. They also have power over the void, which can twist beings into abominations of their former selves. The old gods urge living beings to do dark and terrible deeds, since their whispers are often indistinguishable from one's own thoughts. Sargeras, who is the strongest in the Titan pantheon, found an old god infested world in a far corner of the great dark. The old gods had embedded themselves in that world and shrouded it in void energies. Horrifically, this world had a sleeping world soul within it, dreaming of horrible, dark, and evil things. A dramatic contrast to the happy thoughts he had seen in other sleeping world souls. Nathrazim had also found the old gods on this world and were basking in their void powers. Sargeras interrogated these Nathrazim and through them found out about the Void Lords, the Old Gods, and their plans. Sargeras knew that if the Old Gods succeeded, the creature created would be unspeakably evil. It could consume all the matter and energy in the universe, which is exactly what the Void Lords wanted. Sargeras knew that there was only one way to stop a Dark Titan from awakening, to destroy it while it still slept. With one strike, he split the world in two, killing the Titan and the Old Gods. In response to the discovery of the Old Gods, Sargeras brought it to the attention of the rest of the Pantheon, where Sargeras expressed his fear that maybe existence itself was flawed and nothingness was preferable to the Void Lords succeeding. Sargeras felt that the only way to defeat the Void Lords was to destroy existence entirely so that they could not consume it. Maybe after the universe was destroyed, life could take root again. None of the rest of their pantheon agreed, as it was their self-appointed duty to protect life, not destroy it. Sargeras would end up leaving, feeling nothing but sadness and betrayal. He would go on to create the Burning Legion, to destroy the universe, to thwart the Void Lords and the Old Gods. Some of the Old Gods sent into the universe plummeted from the skies onto primordial Azeroth, a world with a world soul inside, and embedded themselves into the planet. Mountains of cancerous flesh and eyes towered over the land. Their rooting tentacles creep slowly towards the world soul in the middle of the planet. Organic matter also seeped from the old gods, giving rise to two new races, the Naraki, also known as the Faceless Ones, and the Akir. Both of these races were physical manifestations of the old god's will. The Naraki served as taskmasters 
and the Akir were the strong laborers who erected towering citadels around the old god masters. Yasharj was the most powerful of the old gods on Azeroth. Their holdings, as well as the other old gods, became known as the Black Empire. The elementals of Azeroth saw the old gods as a threat to their reign. The elemental lords united for the first time against their common enemy. Alakir's cyclones merged with Ragnaros's flames. Therizane used rock walls to corral her enemies and crush them beneath rock and the seas of Neptilon. However, no matter how many of the old god's servants died, more would spawn from their bodies. The Naraki and Akir ended up swarming the world and enslaving the elementals and the elemental lords. As the Black Empire creeped over the world, Azeroth became an abyss of suffering and death. Old gods would sometimes even make war on each other for domination of the world. Specifically, Nizoth would make war on yogg and Cthun for domination of parts of the world that Yasharj had not yet claimed. As the titan Agrimar continued searching the Great Dark for world souls, he stumbled upon a world the Pantheon would eventually name Azeroth. Seeing the suffering and darkness upon the world struck him with horror. Luckily, Agrimar found that Azeroth's world soul remained uncorrupted, for now. When Agrimar told the rest of the Titans, he urged them to take action, as Azeroth could possibly be the most powerful Titan ever when awakened. Aenar was able to convince the rest of the Pantheon to heed Agrimar's warnings. The Pantheon traveled to Azeroth, but were afraid of taking direct action because they were afraid of harming Azeroth itself. Instead, the Titan Khazgaroth created servants that would walk on Azeroth and make war with the Black Empire of the Old Gods, the Aesir and the Veneer. The Aesir were made of metal, commanding the storms, while the Veneer were made of stone and controlled the earth. Together, they were the Titan Forged. The Pantheon gave some of the Titan Forged their powers and likeness, and these special Titan Forged were called the Keepers. The Titan Forged and the Keepers went to war on the Black Empire. The Keepers and the Titan Forged attacked the Old Gods from the north. The Titan Forged caught the Old Gods totally off guard. The Old Gods used the most powerful minions at their disposal to fend them off, the elemental lords that they enslaved. The Keepers took some Titan Forged and waged war on separate elemental lords to avoid fighting them together. The elemental lords were defeated this way and they were banished to a pocket dimension called the Elemental Plane. The Titan Forge then continued destroying the Old God's minions. They collapsed the burrows of the Akiri, driving them above ground, then killed them as they emerged. In this way, most of the Akiri were exterminated, though some burrowed very deeply underground to escape the Keepers. They then battled through the seas of Naraki to the mountain that was Yasharj. Eventually, at extreme losses from both sides, they made it to the city that was surrounding Yasharj. Yasharj psychically attacked the Titan Forge, poisoning their minds. For the first time, the Titans were afraid that they would lose and took direct action. Amon Thul reached down and grabbed Yasharj and tore him from the crust of Azeroth and was ripped into many, many pieces. Unfortunately, Yasharj's tendrils were much deeper into Azeroth than the Titans thought. And while Yasharj got ripped from the world, it also ripped a huge wound into Azeroth. The world soul's lifeblood began leaking to the surface. Liquid, arcane energy. This showed the titans that they could not deal with the other old gods in the same way, or Azeroth might be killed. So they would not further harm Azeroth. The titan keepers continued to wage war against the remaining old gods on Azeroth's surface. First, they defeated Nizoth's minions in the southeast and trapped the old god in an underground prison. Next, they stormed the temple city of Naraki that formed around Cthun and imprisoned them as well, similarly to Nizoth beneath the earth. yogg would not fall as easily and unleashed his greatest minions, the Cthraxi. Cthraxi were huge Naraki with great strength and intelligence who could also drive the Titan Forge to madness. The Cthraxi led the Black Empire into a swarm over the Titan Forge on all sides, 
so that by the time the Keepers and the Titanforge reached yogg -Saron, their numbers were significantly weakened. yogg -Saron would have destroyed all the Keepers and Titanforge then and there if Odin did not summon the rest of his strength to command Loken to weave an illusion for their enemies, to see themselves as the enemy. Through Loken's spell and Odin's strength, they pacified yogg -Saron and imprisoned him deep within the earth. Now that the old gods had been dealt with, the Titans then had to focus on the aftermath. First and foremost was the scar that was left on the world when Amon Thul ripped Yasharj from the earth. The arcane lifeblood was still leaking from the wound, from the world soul. Keepers worked hard to erect magical wards so that arcane energy would not continue leaking until all that remained was a huge lake of energy that became known as the Well of Eternity. The Keepers would then move on to other work to stabilize the world soul and put systems in place to encourage life to bloom on Azeroth. The Keepers created the Forge of Wills and the Forge of Origination. The Forge of Wills was built to shape the world's sentience and was built upon the prison of yogg -Saron. The Fortress of Ulduar was built around the prison and the forge to protect both and would be the main bastion of the Titan Forge on Azeroth. Highkeeper Ra traveled south to install the Forge of Origination with some of the Titan Forged and found that the remains of Yasharj laid in pieces across the landscape. Where the pieces lay, the land was infused with the void, the largest piece being Yasharj's heart. These pieces would spawn the Shah and would give rise to physical manifestations of negative emotions in Pandaria. Rather than destroy the heart, Ra took the heart with him to the south so that he and the other keepers could study it to understand void creatures and the old gods better. It was contained in a subterranean vault, much like the other old gods, called the Vault of Yasharj, watched over by the titan-forged Mogu. There, the Forge of Origination, meant to eradicate life on Earth, if it was corrupted so Azeroth could start new, was also built, alongside a huge fortress to protect the vault and the forge, called Uldum. Titanforged Tolvir and Anubisaths were tasked with safeguarding Uldum. Ra and the Titanforge then went to Cthulhu's prison and expanded it, creating the fortress of Ankarak to better guard Cthulhu's prison. The remaining Titan Forge that followed him safeguarded that prison. Ra would then patrol the southern reaches of the world to make sure the Titan Forged succeeded in their charges. yogg -Saron's corruption slowly corrupted Loken as he guarded his prison. This led Loken to betray the rest of the Keepers, utilize the Cathraxi, which led to the death of Tyr, who he killed because he found out about Loken's corruption. yogg -Saron also corrupted the Forge of Wills to create a disease in the Titan Forged, to turn them from stone and metal beings into weak beings of flesh. This led to the Vrykul turning into humans, Earthen turning into dwarves, and Mechanomes devolving into gnomes. What Yogg-Saron did not anticipate is the curse of flesh and mortality gave rise to qualities that gave them strength, courage, resolve, and heroism. Of the insectoid race of the Akir, three distinct races would emerge, depending on their proximity to different old gods. Those in the north, due to their proximity to yogg -Saron, would evolve into the Nerubians, with the kingdom of Ajol Nerub. The Akir in the southwest, close to Cthulhu, would evolve into the Karaji, with their kingdom at Ankarak. Finally, those in the southeast, where Yashar still polluted the land, would evolve into the Mantid, and establish the colony of Mantaves. Each of these races would worship the old gods. In Ajol Narub, most of the Nerubians fought against the minions of the old gods. However, some of the tunnels were dug too deep and exposed the tendrils of yogg -Saron. Roused by this disturbance, he sent Harold Volage to enslave and cull those Nerubians that would resist him. Before the War of the Ancients, the Old Gods were able to invade Nazdormu's realm of time, managing even to open a rift and toss beings back in time in hopes of maybe giving Sargeras a chance to win the War of the Ancients. Changing the flow of time 
and released themselves in the past. The plan was foiled by Nazdormu, sending Krasis, Ronan, and Broxigar back in time, who stopped the Old God's plan and ended up even turning the tide of the war into the defenders of Azeroth's favor. Hi, how are you? Do you want to be you want to be on TV? No. Okay, bye. Hello, baby. You want to give me like give me a little more time? I got to keep I got to record some more. Is that okay with you? Here, what if I hold you? This will this will be our thing now. Later on, during the War of the Ancients, the dragon aspect Neltharion fell prey to whisperings of the old gods. Neltharion's ties to the earth made him particularly close to the prisons of these void beings. This tormented heart led him to create the Dragon Soul, which was used on the other dragons and the armies fighting the Burning Legion. The old gods saw the Dragon Soul as a way to open their prisons with the powers of the titans that the aspects poured into it, and so more chaos. This murdered nearly all of the Blue Dragon Flight. This single attack caused the shattering of the Dragon Flights and nearly lost the war for the defenders of Azeroth. Neltharion became known as Deathwing, and his actions caused the Black Dragon Flight to live the rest of their lives in fear and seclusion, being hunted to the brink of extinction. During the War of the Ancients, the Old Gods were manipulating Illidan to steal the Dragon Soul and use it on the Well of Eternity. This would work alongside Sargeras' spell and would hopefully free the Old Gods. Illidan thought it would turn the Demon Soul into a maelstrom that would suck the demons back in. When the Well of Eternity was destroyed, it did both, partially, breaking the world apart in the process and sucking the tendrils of the Old Gods and the demons that were peeking out back in. The Night Elf Highborn Queen Ishara and her followers who had been watched by the old gods from the Well of Eternity, were pulled into the well as it was ruptured. She wove a spell that would put a shield around them, but it was quickly failing. She then heard whisperings from the old gods, specifically Nizoth, that this did not have to be the end. If she and her followers pledged allegiance to the old gods, they would save them. They pledged themselves, and the old gods saved them by twisting their bodies into fish creatures that could live underwater, the Naga. At the end of the War of the Ancients, the single continent on Azeroth was torn apart in the Sundering. This also rattled the prisons of the Old Gods. Slowly, corruption seeped from their prisons and made its way to the surface. A new mineral called Serenite began spreading throughout Northrend, which was the essence of the Old Gods. In an attempt to stop the spread, the Night Elf Druid Fandral planted branches of the world tree Nordrasil, a new tree, Andrasil, or Quarn of Sorrow, grew near the largest concentration of Serenite and seemed to stop the spread. Unfortunately, Andrasil's roots had reached so deep it breached yogg prison, who was infusing the tree with void energies and corrupting the living creatures, driving them into madness, making the Tonka and the forest nymphs war with each other. The Cenarian Circle was forced to destroy Andrasil, who would then call the fallen tree Vordrasil, or Broken Crown. Unfortunately, yogg had also used the world tree to corrupt the Emerald Dream, Ysera's realm. The dreamways were polluted, and slowly this corruption would evolve into the Emerald Nightmare. Cthun corrupted the Akir who lived by his prison, he used them as an army to attack the world, starting the War of the Shifting Sands, even corrupting the Tolvir, who were originally meant to guard his prison. The Karaji almost succeeded in conquering Kalimdor, but were stopped by the combined forces of the Night Elves and the Dragonflights, who raised the Scarab Wall, which contained the Insectoids and Cthun. After the opening of the Dark Portal and the Orcs attacking Stormwind in the First War, one of the orc clans, the Twilight's Hammer, had an attunement to the Void, and thus, the Old Gods. The Ogre Mage Cho'Gal volunteered to be their leader and keep them in line. Members of the Twilight's Hammer were hearing the whispers of the Old Gods loud and clear. They saw the whispers as a sign of destiny, that they had found a place to bring about the Hour of Twilight, or the end of the world. 
when the void consumes all existence. The old gods were pleased with the horde's lust for war and encouraged the Twilight's hammer to continue to help the orcs, but refused to directly give a scrap of their power to help puppets of the Burning Legion, who really were attempting to destroy them. Over time, Cho'gal attuned himself to the old gods and he branded their prophecies under the skin of pale orcs in the Twilight's Hammer Clan. Then he cut off their flesh to form pages of a book that would codify the teachings of the Void in the Twilight Canicle. He then communed with the old gods and their servants in the form of Ragnaros and the Dark Iron Dwarves. They secured a refuge for him in the Shadow Council at Black Rock Spire. The old gods were excited to see the chaos that the orcs would throw into the world in the coming years. Meanwhile, the Old Gods continued to guide Deathwing and the Black Dragonflight to sow chaos in the world. Deathwing took the guise of a nobleman in Lordaeron, where he spread misinformation, such as encouraging Lordaeron that the orc invasion to the south was a myth. He then took the guise of a Blackrock orc and lived among them for months. He granted visions to Zuluhead of the Dragon Maw, of his clan riding powerful winged dragons. The idea was intoxicating. Through these, Deathwing coaxed Zuluhead to Red Ridge Mountains, where they recovered the Dragon Soul and used it to enslave Alexstrasza and the Red Dragonflight to ride into battle. Now the primary guardian against Deathwing was gone, and the Horde were more powerful in their ability to sow chaos in the world. Later on, the Old Gods continued to subversely support the Lich King for creating turmoil and chaos in the world, which would take the eyes off them. In addition, even were happy that Illidan was attacking the Lich King during the Third War, as it would create even more turmoil. They had a heavier hand in helping Illidan, however, even sending the Naga to aid him. When Arthas took the mantle of the Lich King, he cited his primary purpose in conquering the world and turning everyone undead so that Azeroth could defend itself from the Burning Legion and the Old Gods. He felt that a world divided between the Alliance and Horde could never stand against their might. In quick succession, the heroes of Azeroth were able to defeat the Old God's elemental servant, Ragnaros, in a desperate battle. Then, their attention turned to Ankarak in Silithus, where C'Thun had slowly manipulated and corrupted the Silithid race into an army, the Karaji. He grew an army to eventually conquer Azeroth in a new Black Empire. C'Thun's corruption began seeping beyond the Scarab Wall, which was noticed by the bronze dragon Anachronos, who marshaled the Horde and Alliance and prepared for war. The Horde and Alliance were forced to band together into a force that was called the Might of Kalimdor. They opened the gates of Ankarak to take the war to the Karaji. Varak Sarfang led the Horde and fought the Karaji on the surface to keep them distracted, while the Alliance went deep into Ankarak. The Alliance heroes were haunted with visions and whispers of C'Thun, but valiantly fought off insanity and killed the old gods. Azeroth's heroes fended off destruction by working together, and it would not be the first time the world is faced with certain destruction. Two of Azeroth's four old gods were now dead. While the Horde and Alliance were marching on the Lich King, the dwarf explorer Bron Bronzebeard was exploring the Titan complex of Ulduar to his horror, he found that not only was the old god Yogg-Saron here, but his prison was failing, and his corruption had seeped into Ulduar and began corrupting its guardians. Cho'gal, in fact, had infiltrated the fortress and sabotaged Yogg-Saron's prison. Heroes from the Alliance and the Horde were forced to put their war on the Lich King on pause to deal with Yogg-Saron, because if the old god was left unchecked, his corruption would continue to spread to the rest of Azeroth. The Alliance and Horde infiltrated Ulduar, confronting corrupted Keepers and horrific visions of Yogg-Saron. However, they triumphed and destroyed Yogg-Saron. After the defeat of the Lich King, the Emerald Dream was corrupted by the Old Gods. Due to the bridge that the World Tree Vordrasil made between the Old Gods and the Dream, many of the citizens of Azeroth fell asleep, not being able to wake, and were forced to live through their worst nightmares. King Varian falsely blamed the Horde, but they were able to band together and defeat the Nightmare Lord, an agent of the Old Gods, with the help of Malfurion, and hold back the Emerald Nightmare. 
for now. Unable to fully stop the nightmare, Balfurion and Turand sealed off that area of the Emerald Dream with the satyr Xavius, the Nightmare Lord, spirit within, and decided they would deal with it another time. Over time, the corruption of Deathwing grew worse and worse. He erupted into the world, causing the cataclysm. This threw the world into disarray, including greatly agitating the elements. The Twilight's Hammer Cult, led by Cho'Gall, were obsessed with the old gods and viewed Deathwing as the herald for the Hour of Twilight. Deathwing was eventually felled by Thrall, wielding the Demon Soul, which is Deathwing's own creation, with Dragon Aspect and Old God powers inside. The Hour of Twilight was once again delayed. During the reign of Garrosh Hellscream, in search for more power, he uncovered the heart of Yasharj in Pandaria to use as a tool of war. He then wished to use that power to conquer Azeroth for the true Horde. He is confronted by Terenzu when he brings the heart to corrupt the Veil of Eternal Blossoms and use the pools to restore it and defeats him. Garrosh declares that Nong Orcs are no longer a part of his Horde. Orc rebels and the Alliance would go on to defeat Orc Loyalists and the old god empowered Garrosh to stop his reign of terror. Yasharj's heart would be drained, totally ending Yasharj's influence on the world. The old gods then aided the true horde by sending the infinite dragonflight, a dragonflight from a future that had been corrupted by the old gods, to release Garrosh. They succeeded and Garrosh was sent to an alternate timeline Draenor to gather forces, then return to Azeroth to continue to sow chaos. When alternate timeline Gul'dan ushered in a new Burning Legion invasion, Xavius was resurrected and it continued corrupting the Emerald Dream. The old gods delighted in using the Emerald Nightmare in helping the Burning Legion sow chaos. Eventually, Xavius was killed again and the Nightmare dissipated almost completely. While the Horde was attempting to win the trust of the Xandalar Trolls, they learn of a being known as Gahun, an artificial old god accidentally made by the Titans and the patron deity of the Blood Trolls. Titans were experimenting on the old god's corruption and accidentally created the perfect avatar of the old god's desire to consume. The Blood Trolls worked to free Gahun from his prison in Uldir to use him to rule Azeroth. In an attempt to do this, they resurrected Gahun's champion, Mithrax, to destroy Uldir's seal and succeeds. With the seal broken, Gahun began to quickly gain power. Gahun was nothing but rot, pestilence, and decay. The ultimate parasite. The Horde and Alliance were forced to venture into Uldir to face Gahun's champions, and eventually slayed the artificial old god himself. Rathian, the son of Deathwing, has devoted his life to defeating the old gods so that he and the rest of his flight would not be consumed by the same corruption as his father. In his pursuit, his mind was twisted by Nizoth, who convinced him the only way to save Azeroth was to rule it in the old god's name, calling himself the Black Emperor. During all this time, the last old god, Nizoth, had been scheming. He had been fueling tensions between the Alliance and Horde, which eventually erupted into a full-blown war and took the eyes off him. Eventually, the Horde and Alliance were able to come together to assault his city of Neolotha to confront the Old God. In their assault, they knocked the corruption out of Rathian. However, the Old God was too powerful and was on the verge of corrupting the champions of Azeroth until Azeroth's world soul herself intervenes and gives the champions a surge of power. The champion slew Nizoth, destroying the last old god and Neolotha once and for all. Some beings are able to consume the energies of the void and still fight off the whispers of the old gods, making it so they can wield void powers and remain sane. This takes extreme willpower and resolve. Shadow priests do this, and some blood elves and high elves are able to do this, which transforms them into void elves which also act as a beacon for other creatures of the void. So I hope you enjoyed 
this video on the old gods. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe and check me out on other social medias on TikTok, on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, join the community on Discord and especially join me on Twitch. We're forming a pretty cool community there and would love for you to be there as well. Now, if you hear some thoughts that aren't your own, uh, go see a doctor. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.